I have on my wrist quite possibly the most beautiful blue dial on the market. And I know that's kind of a sensationalized statement. No, I'm not trying to do clickbait here. Let me add a caveat. This is the most beautiful and exquisite and sharp blue dial on the market that is relatively affordable and relatively attainable. I think if you ask watch collectors what is the best blue dial on the market, they're probably going to name a few different usual suspects. I think chief of which is the FP Journe Chronomet Blue. And this one is a beautiful piece, uh, but it is no longer available. It is incredibly hard to find and sells at a premium uh, on the secondary market of about $100,000. So really, I mean, it's, it's not something that a lot of watch collectors are even considering right now. Another watch that comes to mind is one that I have owned, and that is the Vacheron Constantin Overseas 4500V in blue in stainless steel, and that thing is a breathtaking watch. The dial is so nice because, yes, you have the darker royal hues of blue that almost border on purple, but then you get the sun ray in specific lighting scenarios, and you also get that lacquered finish, so it is very dynamic and very well executed. So that one, uh, you know, again, very hard to come by, especially at retail price, and right now on the secondary market, I believe it's trading for about 30 grand. So again, not very available, not very attainable, not very affordable. That brings us to this Grand Seiko, which in my opinion, again, I'm not trying to be uh, sensational here. I'm not trying to do clickbait. This is every bit as beautiful and breathtaking as my experience with the overseas. And I've not owned the FP Journe, but it's right up there <laughs> in terms of the quality and the light play in the depth and the brilliance that that watch displays. So this one retails at $6,800. It is a limited edition, so eventually this will sell out, and I'm sure the premium on the secondary market will increase a little bit. I wouldn't say more than 10 grand. You look at the previous Peacock, and that one is hovering between eight and 10, and I think a similar projection is safe to assume with this a uh, newer peacock with the blue dial. And you know, just the fact that you can get something that's still fairly limited, that's still special, but has that depth and brilliance and it's under 10 grand. I mean, that's just something that doesn't come around very often in this hobby. Now, am I trying to say that Grand Seiko is as good as Vacheron Constantin and FP Journe, specifically those two watches that I mentioned? No, I'm not trying to say that. Again, I'm trying to be objective here. But one could make a serious argument that this actually exceeds the other two watches in specific areas, but not as an entire package, if that makes sense. So what makes this blue so good? I've kind of rambled about this. Well, really, you got to get the shade right. You got to nail that color down. And it's not the lighter, you know, powder blues and baby blues almost bordering on silver. Those are cool. No, this is a serious blue. This is a dark blue. This borders on purple. This is a royal blue. And that shade is hard to pull off. As we see on the market, there are not a lot of great uh, executions in this hue of the color spectrum. So Grand Seiko nails the color. And then they get the range too. So you get some of the electric tones, you get the royal tones, and then you get the hint of purple in specific lighting scenarios. And that perfectly matches the overseas, that perfectly matches the chronomet blue. But uh, this one goes up to the next level because you add in some texture and it's not dominant. From arm's length, you can tell something's going on, but it's mostly color and reflectivity. But then you get close and especially as you go in on a macro level, you see the concentric rings, you see the you know, almost basket weave form of this texture that emanates from the hand stack. And then you add on that lacquered finish, that reflectivity, and it really is breathtaking. This is art on wrist, more so than just the mechanics of the true high beat movement within. It's art with the level of detail work and brilliance that is displayed here in this hand assembly done in the Shinsu Watch Studio in Japan. So, I mean, it's so good. Now, here's where I'm going to geek out a little bit more because the dial is great on its own, 
but it's taken to the next level. It's uh, accentuated to a small degree because of the applied markers, the handset, and the date wheel. So you look at, I don't know, let's, let's take the overseas, for example. A great dial, it has nice white gold markers. Uh, the date wheel is very basic. It's just, you know, white. It's a little bit disappointing in that aspect. You look at this, and you have applied markers that have linear striations on the top. So there are small facets that grab even more reflection and angle them out at different degrees. So you don't really notice it, but you're getting more light play on these markers and hands. And that is very impressive, especially if you take out a loop or you go in on a high level of magnification. So I really like that. I also like the fact that the date wheel is not just basic, it's silvered. So that also matches the, you know, the Dauphine hands that are brushed and it matches the, uh, the applied markers. And then you take a look at the chapter ring, and you still have that great color play. You still have that range. You still have that tone, but you also have the concentric texturing. So I like that too. And then, if I'm not geeking out already, let's step back and take a look at the case. This is my all-time favorite Grand Seiko case. It's called the 44GS case, and uh, it's almost like a gem, right, with the facets, with the light play, with the high polish, the Suratsu polish on these linear lugs that angle and grab more light play. So you, you take everything into account, the case shape, the polishing, the dial, the texture, the color play, the small details of the hands and markers. And really you do have a level of art that's done in a 500 run limited edition. Right now, it's still available from a number of different authorized dealers. And I'd like to shout out Exquisite Timepieces in Naples, Florida for lending this one in for review, as well as some other awesome Grand Seiko models that I'll be reviewing shortly. Uh, but yeah, it's still available. And again, it's under $10,000. And you compare this to an overseas at 30 grand or a Chronomet Blue at about 100 grand. And if you, I think if you genuinely asked a lay person, not a crazy watch collector who knows secondary market values, you just ask somebody uh, an objective, you know, what do you think of these three? Do you think they're in the same price tier? I would argue that the Grand Seiko is going to be right up there, if not perceived as more of a luxury you know, product compared to the other ones. And that might be a little bit wild to say. And perhaps I'm being too dramatic here. Uh, let me rein it back. And before I'm accused of you know, trying to make an advertisement for a Grand Seiko, uh, let's talk about the warts about this model. This peacock is a touch thick. And anytime you have a very elegant, beautiful watch, you want that refinement, you know, from the thin profile as it sits on your wrist. And this, it's not overly tall. It's not dive watch tall, but uh, it could be better. And really the height is coming down to your true GMT high beat caliber within that is an in-house movement. Uh, it's not the latest and greatest of uh, high beat design that Grand Seiko has done. There is a more sophisticated, better finished caliber. It is more expensive, but at the moment, I don't believe they're doing a true GMT with that. I'm sure that will come in future years, but this caliber is a touch thick and you can see that on the wrist. The other thing to consider is for those of you that have maybe never owned Grand Seiko before and you're used to Swiss luxury, you're used to German luxury, you're used to spending about seven, eight thousand dollars and getting a really great bracelet from the likes of Omega and Rolex and Breitling and uh, Glass Huta Original. So, if you compare your experience with those watches versus this Grand Seiko, uh, they're so hard to compare. The Grand Seiko, it's thinner, it has more flex. Yes, it's still beautifully finished. Yes, it's perfectly functional. Yes, you do have the half links. You can get a pretty good fit, uh, but I think the bracelets are generally regarded as the weakest part of any Grand Seiko or Seiko product. But you, you don't buy a Grand Seiko for the bracelet. You buy a Grand Seiko for the above average finish of the case, uh, the beautiful exquisite detail work, uh, the, the really artful dials, and then of course their, uh, their different movements that they offer from spring drive to high accuracy quartz to uh, true mechanicals and high beat movements. So yeah, a little bit tall, bracelet's not the best. 
And one thing that Grand Seiko could do to really bring this to the next level, and I think surpass many high horology watches, that would be doing excellent anti-reflective treatment on the top of the sapphire, as well as the underside of the sapphire, because you don't need added light play from reflections on a crystal when you have such a dynamic dial that does it all with the lacquer finish and the color hue and the texture and the applied markers. You want to enhance the clarity. And so I think if Grand Seiko did that, man, this thing would be uh, even more of a work of art than it already is. So that being said, am I trying to say that Grand Seiko is better than uh, Vacheron Constantin and FP Journe? No, I'm trying to illustrate what an amazing dial this is, what a work of art this is for the relatively attainable 500 piece limited edition and uh, the retail price of $6,800 uh, when you compare this to a 30 grand watch and a 100 grand watch. The value that is represented here, again, it doesn't come around very often, so I'm excited myself. Let me end with one thing. Uh, I just bought a Grand Seiko and I'm really excited about it. It's, it's not the first one I've ever bought, but I'm really looking forward to adding it. It should come in tomorrow as of the time of recording this video in the mail. Uh, but man, I'm really tempted to add this one as well. Uh, I don't want to miss out on this blue because you don't get this level of art very often. It just doesn't come across very often. So it's not my favorite movement. It's a touch thick. It doesn't have the best bracelet, but man, the dial is so good. The detail is so good. The color is so impressive. I, I almost get this fear of missing out. Like, man, I, I have the opportunity to be one of the fortunate 500 right now. What if I miss out on this? Will I really regret it? But in buying this with, with my watch budget, having just bought a different Grand Seiko, you know, I'd have to let go of a different watch. And I don't know if I'm ready to do that yet. So I'm mulling a few things in my, uh, in my mind right now. Uh, it's a lot of fun, this hobby. This one was a beautiful watch. And I'd like to seriously challenge those of you that are still here in this video, the most enthusiastic of uh, the consumer base for luxury watches. I'd like to challenge you to name a blue dial that is more impressive than this one. Uh, and I'll give you a budget of up to 30 grand, maybe 40 grand, anything under 40 grand that you think has more prowess displayed in the craftsmanship, more color play uh, that's more impressive than this, I'd like you to name it in the comment section because off the top of my head, I can't think of one. This one is that impressive and I'm fortunate to have it here in front of the camera and to share it with those of you watching. So uh, please, name a watch. I'll wait.